When I was about six years old, my mom would take me and my brother to Target at 11 every Wednesday after an appointment. It was one of those huge super targets. It was in a very safe neighborhood and most people who went there were families. One time, when we first walked in, I noticed a man who was about 50 in a Carhartt jacket and with a pair of jeans covered in holes and paint stains. I would have never noticed him, but I thought he looked different. So I did what every six year old does. I stared at him. He stared back at me and gave me a toothless smile as we turned into an aisle. I didn't see him again that day. The next week when we went, I didn't see him either. But the next week, I saw him from a few aisles away. And the next week, he was in the toy aisle. This continued for a couple more weeks, and I would see him from afar and just thought, oh, he must come here at the same time every week like we do, until one week. My mom told me and my brother to get something from an aisle behind her. I hadn't seen the man yet that day, but as soon as we got out of sight from my mom, he walked over to us out of nowhere. He walked up to us and said hi. We knew not to talk to strangers, so we didn't say anything and started backing away from him. He kept walking towards us and said, my name's Tom, do you want to go look at toys with me? After that, me and my brother broke into tears and ran back to our mom. We told her what he said, and she told us to be careful. About 10 minutes later, we were in the kids' clothes section. My brother and I were still crying, but not really making a scene. I saw Tom walking towards us and pointed him out to my mom. She started calmly walking with us to the security guard, who was about 300 feet away and standing at the door. My mom explained to the guard that someone was following us and had tried to get my brother and I to go with him. Just as she finished describing him, he walked up next to us. He started loudly talking to the security guard, and I have no clue what he said. But then, he looked at my brother and I and said, What you crying for? That made us cry harder. The guard told him that he needed to leave, but not before Tom reached down and started unbuckling his belt and said to my mom, Do you need this? Do you need this? To which he was promptly taken out of the store and told never to come back. I never saw him again after that, but I still don't like going to that Target. I was about 13 and shopping at a Target one day with my mom. It was a really average day. I'm 13 and I always wander into different aisles and meet up with my mom later. It's really not a big deal. I'm in an aisle and this woman I don't know comes up to me and gives me a hug. I'm Hispanic and have a huge extended family, so it's not uncommon for strangers to greet me like this. I expected her to tell me how well we knew each other, but she became emotional and wouldn't let me go. She also called me by a different name. I realized then she had me confused. I can't remember the name. Let's say Eliza. She said, Eliza, it's you baby. I've missed you so much. I decided to explain that I wasn't who she thought. I thought we'd laugh it off, but then things got dark. Eliza was the name of her dead daughter. Baby, you died. Why did you die? You were my firstborn. How come you aren't dead? Where have you been? Why did you die? Baby, you've returned to me. She was thoroughly starting to freak me out, and the more I insisted that I wasn't Eliza, the more she was convinced I was. Of course it's you. I would know that face anywhere. She smiled at me like I was being silly. A mother knows her daughter's face, my sweet daughter. Your mother has missed you so much, baby. And she didn't seem crazy. I looked at her for signs of insanity, but she was well clothed, really well clothed, and had normal hair, nice makeup on, and a regular shopping basket full of everyday things. She continued with things like, so many weeks without you. What were you doing in that car that night? I buried you, baby. Thank God you're back. I was so freaked out by her being convinced about me that I have even begun to doubt myself. I made an excuse and ran away from her and found my mom. I told her the story, half expecting some revelation about me being Elisa, or maybe some explanation somehow, like a relative who died tragically that I have an uncanny resemblance to. I realized when I saw the look of fear and horror in my mom's face 
that the whole thing was just this woman being crazy. My mom isn't a very protective mother, not very nurturing, and I was 13, but the entire rest of my time at Target, she held me really close and made sure I didn't leave her sight. She stayed with me a while. I was afraid of other people and Elise's family would come up to me insisting that I was their dead relative. Thankfully, it never happened again. Let me start off by saying that this morning, I wasn't in the best of moods. I had to work the graveyard shift last night, and I woke up after only four hours of sleep with my back killing me. I couldn't get back to sleep, so I decided to go run a few errands, since I was now wide awake. I needed to get my hair cut while I was out as well. My sister works at a salon that's right next to a Target. So after I got my sister to mow my scalp, I popped over to Target intending to grab a few things before I headed home. I was pushing my cart down the frozen food section. I turned the corner to go into the next aisle. When I did, there was a middle-aged lady that was pushing her cart heading in the opposite direction. I nearly bumped into her but stopped before our carts collided. She gave me a mean look and said in a really bitchy tone, excuse me. Now, again, I have to say I wasn't in the best of moods and I'm a very short-tempered person as it is. So without thinking, I shot back at her and said, Shut up, you're fine. Call me an asshole if you want, but no one's perfect. But what happened next was just pure insanity. The lady then suddenly left her shopping cart and started following me. I noticed this about halfway down the aisle, and I turned around to ask what her problem was. And then, I shit you not, she rolled her eyes back into her head pointed at me and screamed very loudly. When I say screamed, I mean she was shrieking at the top of her lungs. It was like something out of the exorcist. I hurried down the aisle to get away from this insane person, but she started running after me, still pointing at me. Needless to say, all the bystanders immediately stopped what they were doing and stared at us. The lady kept screaming like a banshee at the top of her lungs while she chased me around the store. Well, I noped it out of there. I didn't feel like explaining this situation to an employee, and I couldn't stand hearing that piercing scream for a second longer. I ran out of the store. I looked back into the store as I was headed to the car, and the lady was standing just outside the now open, automated sliding doors, but she was still inside the store, if that makes sense. While she stood there, her mouth was hanging wide open, and she was still pointing at me, and her eyes were still rolled into the back of her head. All you could see was the whites of her eyes. She suddenly turned around and briskly walked back into the store. I decided to pick up my stuff at Walmart just down the street instead. All I could think of the entire drive home was, what the fuck was that? Creepy screaming possessed banshee lady, perhaps I shouldn't have been so rude. I used to work overnight at Target, stocking the store. The shift was from 10 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. I also worked at a doctor's office in the daytime as a medical assistant and went to college. As you can imagine, I got little sleep, almost none in fact. But I was used to running on a few hours of sleep after a few years of severe insomnia, so I didn't think anything of it. The first couple of weeks at the store was okay. It was desolate except for our team of stock employees. The lights were dimmed halfway. I would often get goosebumps, and my intuition would flare with creepy vibes. Regardless, I was great at my entry-level job. I was cross-trained in a bunch of other areas, and was most efficient in cosmetics, organizing and putting away the tiny items quickly and efficiently. The baby section, again, organizing and putting items away. I was soon the go-to for these sections, except for the rare occasion that I would be in general hard lines or soft lines, which was clothing. I worked five nights a week at Target, and the work was tedious and frustrating. I could do it in my sleep, literally, kind of. I would often fall asleep and continue working, but obviously, I would feel very disoriented when I came to. I would find that I had opened boxes of granola bars and thrown them over the aisles. I would discover that I had lined up shopping carts and alternating patterns. None of these made sense to me, but throughout it all, I got my work done. A couple of months in, my creepy vibes were getting worse. I often hallucinated, seeing people crouched in the shopping carts. 
I saw people sitting in the boxes we used to organize things in, always staring at me, in the woman's clothing section. In the woman's clothing section, I often saw the same shadowed woman darting between racks of clothing, and a child often hiding under shelves. I was beginning to question whether I should continue working at Target. It sucked, but it was a solid 60% of my income. I wanted to talk to some of my coworkers about it, but I figured my coworkers would think that I'm crazy, so I didn't tell anyone. My hallucinations became more vivid. One night, I heard a baby crying, faintly past the music in my earbuds. I popped out one of the earbuds, assuming the noise would pass, like the visual hallucinations did, but it kept on, so I followed it. It was coming from behind the strollers. I was terrified. It began to reach over the strollers, to peek behind. The noise suddenly stopped, and this disgusting, rotting smell overwhelmed me. I looked back, and there was nothing. The smell wasn't there anymore, but I was nauseous and glad that I was almost on break time. In the break room, about ten minutes later, a few of the Target veterans were talking about the men's clothing section. One lady told them that the whole shelf had come undone and fell, and they joked about how they always said it was haunted. I sat with them and asked if that was truly the case, if they thought that, and a couple of them had seen the woman that I saw in the clothing section, and one had even said he saw what looked like a kid run past his aisles. I told them about the few things that had happened to me. They were taken back, but told me that I needed to sleep, and they were probably right. The next night, I was putting away the infant food. I was putting away the pouches of pureed food when the same rotting smell from the night before hit me. It seemed to be coming from behind the pouches. I cleared the shelf and saw a rotting open pouch in the back of the shelf. I grabbed it and the whole thing turned slimy. It was crawling with maggots. I violently jumped and immediately dropping the pouch. I suddenly came to and the pouch was lying on the ground, busted open, but no maggots, no smell, nothing too out of the ordinary. I tossed it in the damages and tried to collect my bearings. I got back to work and suddenly came to again. In my left hand was a piece of cardboard I had torn off one of the boxes, and with my right hand, I was carving into the cardboard with my box cutter. I had cut open my hand. The small wound wasn't deep, but I was scarred. The pouches I had cleared off were back on the shelf and perfectly in line. I couldn't quite tell why I was carving the cardboard, but it was abstract and menacing. I shook it off. I tried to pass it as more an insomnia-fueled weirdness. I started smoking a little bit of weed before every shift and on break. It made the nights longer, but mellowed out the vibes. I was in cosmetics, dancing to the music from my earbuds when I heard something drop. I turned around and a nail polish had fallen as I watched another fall. This one shattered and it was red, and it looked like this horrifying blood stain. I tried to clean it up, and the glass cut my fingers and hurt so incredibly bad, but I couldn't stop. I started crying, desperately trying to clean up the spill, and I came to and I was painting a piece of cardboard with the nail polish in my fingers. My hands were not cut up, the bottle was not smashed, and I had opened it and poured it all over my hands. The fear that I experienced at that target began to negatively affect my life outside of work. I began to hallucinate in the doctor's office. I would often think that the patients were trying to hurt me. I would often dream about target, at home in my short bouts of sleep and in class. The final straw was a dream, and in the dream, I was putting away laundry detergent, and the shelf seemed to be never-ending, so I took out all the detergent and reached into the shelf. I kept reaching, and I started crawling into the shelf. It was slow and precise. It was like a slow, awkward army crawl, my feet kicking along. I kept crawling and crawling. I began to crawl over glass and box cutters. The smell of rotting baby food and nail polish hit me, burning my nostrils and making me heave, and suddenly, I jumped off the couch at my house, screaming obscenities. I was sobbing hysterically. The only thing in my mind was the final image in my dream. My face was twisted horrifically with razor stuck into it, and nail polish and baby food pouring out of my mouth, nose, and ears. I was smiling. I had a rather odd experience last year in a Target with my friend. She and I were shopping in the clothing section when a decent sized group of people came in. 
apparently arguing because they were yelling at each other. Well, as we continued shopping, it suddenly occurred to us that it had been a couple of minutes and the yelling was still happening, and furthermore, that it was just one woman's voice going pretty far away but still audible at this point because she was yelling so loudly. We couldn't figure out from our distance if she was speaking English or another language. We thought this was odd, but kind of ignored it. Well, as we were about to go into the shoe section, we saw that the person yelling was in there and was alone. She wasn't with the group at all and had just happened to walk in at the same time another group of people had. She was just standing there alone, screaming out very loudly. As we got closer, we started realizing that she was switching back and forth between English and some other language that sounded like it could have been Creole perhaps. She was dressed how I've seen some Haitian women in documentaries and her accent and speaking English definitely sounded Haitian so that seemed to fit and as we got slightly closer we finally were able to make out what she was yelling which was I said it's time to kill more babies and then something presumably the same thing in Creole I said it's time to sacrifice more babies and then back to Creole and she was just going on like that just walking slowly alone yelling super loud going back and forth between English and Creole my friend and I were creeped out so we made for another part of the store we were looking at stationery when we heard the lady's voice slowly getting closer again it sounded like she was coming up towards the row across from us but I think she figured she'd just keep moving past well that didn't happen we heard her voice get to the row across from us, separated by the main aisle. As I looked at stationary, I saw her turn and walk into the row from the corner of my eye, and I realized in that moment that my friend had just deserted me and gone around to the next row. The woman had not stopped yelling her craziness, and so, as I saw in the corner of my eye that she had stopped and was just standing there yelling, I finally turned slowly on my heel to face her. She stood there looking me right in the eyes as I faced her. She maintained eye contact and said, I said it's time to sacrifice more babies. At which point, I slowly turned on my heel again, walking around the corner and grabbed my friend. And we noped it the hell out of there shortly after. I still can't believe no security guards came and got her in the time that we were there, which was probably a good 15 minutes or more. And that target has several security guards. I have no idea how I was so calm at the time because later that day I was totally freaked out by it. It was just a weird situation.